Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Matt and Pat Sports Chat. I'm Pat. He's Matt. We're going to chat about sports. I've used that two weeks in a row now. That was better. It's the working first, for you. The first time it was just off the cuff, baby. But now I'm using it. We're here at Shenanigans on the Bucolic West Side of Sioux Falls. And uh, as always, very thankful for them for uh, allowing us to come in here and invade their space. We got to, we had to use a little bit different space today. So we There's got people a, in here. It's a busy lunch crowd. Yeah. We got a different mood going today with the lighting, man. I like it. And you, you I'm repping the colors. Yeah. Let's see. Look at that. <laughs> what so you should explain to the people this Yeah, this this, this would have been back in the old location at the mall. Yep. Uh, they sponsored an amateur baseball team I played on in two thousand three, I wanna say. So that would make this the the twentieth anniversary. <laughs> two thousand two, two thousand three. It was at least twenty years ago. And That's uh, the only thing that, that was rough about it is if a bar sponsors your amateur baseball team yeah you kind of got to go drink beers there yeah. after the games yep. and we were nowhere near the mall yeah. so the game and plus our team sucked <laughs> so we would get beat 17 to 1 and then the coach is like hey guys want to go to shenanigans I'm like no <laughs> we do not want to drive 10 miles across town to drink beer after we just got our asses kicked but <laughs> yeah. we did it once in a while and uh it was a short-lived uh, sponsorship, our fault, not shenanigans. So, <laughs> appreciated it then, appreciate it now. It was the Bre Sioux Falls Brewers. That was the name of the team. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. not to be confused with the current Sioux Falls Brewers yeah. who have won multiple state championships. This team never made a state tournament. So, well, you know, at least you we got let the them have the name though. We didn't, we didn't yeah. trademark it or anything. <laughs> at least you got the t shirt. Yeah. As uh, our old colleague Peter Harriman used to say, already got that t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> do it once, you don't need to do it again. Um, Hey, how you been? Good. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, uh, I went to the lake for Memorial Day weekend. Nice. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in South Dakota, it's still 58 degrees in late May. You yep. know, that it's been in the 80s every day. That's nice. Then get get outside. and Yeah, we yeah. got, you know, you know, usually, you know, you want to try and go do things outside on Memorial Day. But in many, many, many cases, it's cold and rainy and yeah, windy. It doesn't and crappy. cooperate. Yeah. This year? Gorgeous. Yep. Yeah, I got a sunburn. It was nice to get out there and do some grilling and fishing. Didn't catch anything, but uh, summer's officially here. Yeah, even you know, though it's not officially officially here. You should, you should wear some sunscreen. I know. <laughs> I'm, I, I used to be that guy that would be like, I'm just going to go out the first hot day and yep. just burn to a crisp mm -hmm. and just suffer for a couple of days, but then it'll turn into a night. And that always works. Yeah. But then someone told me, like, you're going to get cancer doing that. Stop <laughs> doing that. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, you know, you're a little bit, I, I, I yeah, I'm not a ginger. So, I don't yeah. tan. <laughs> uh, Patty don't tan, if yeah, you know what you're, I'm saying. You're a human crab, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you, yeah, you can brown up a little bit. I can a little bit. My wife, who is, uh, you know, very well, comes up on this show occasionally, is of, uh, I'm of Northern European heritage. She is of Eastern European heritage. And by the end of the summer, she refers to us as a biracial couple. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so enough about me. Um, you uh, have had some uh, cool. You wrote a twins column. Let's start with that. Yeah. This like this was just a. I, it was not on the schedule. I, no. had, I had not budgeted for it. Yeah. I, I love that. I wrote a twins column because I'm so mad. <laughs> I mean, going back about 10, 15 years, that's kind of how those twins columns materialize. Is, uh, oh, I mean, my God. We were actually watching a couple of the games at the lake last weekend. And there was the one on maybe, I don't know if it was a Sunday or Monday. I think it was Sunday. Um, they had a four to one lead going into the seventh. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonny Gray's cruising. They take him out after it gets a couple runners on, go to the bullpen, which sucks. Their bullpen's terrible. Guy comes in, gives up a grand slam. <laughs> Astros take the lead. And that, I, for four years, I've been not really enjoying Rocco Baldelli's tenure yeah. as the manager. You were tough on Rocco. But, I, but I've but i usually stopped short of actually saying get rid of the guy. Yeah. I've just kind of been bitching about him. Yeah. Uh, but after that grand slam, I was like, all right, I've, 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 I've reached my breaking point. Fire Rocco. It's got to go. FireRocco.com. Yeah. Somebody's got to have that URL by now, but maybe we should look and into that. And it's funny. The Twins did come back and win that game. Oh, really? And... I'll give him credit. Yeah. Like it, th that was part of why I was starting to lose patience. Is not only are they underachieving, but they seem to not have a lot of fight. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in, and in that particular game, they fought back. It's like, all right, fair enough. And they've won a couple. They just right after that, they won two out of three from Houston. 
And now last night, the same thing happened again. They were down 6-3 going into the seventh, came back and won 7-6. So maybe it was that Matt Zimmer tweet. <laughs> someone uh, got it back to Rocco Baldelli that he wasn't lighting a fire under his players' asses well enough. Yeah. Well, you did give him seven seven things to work on. So right. and people can go read that column and right they, here. And they can do all those things without – I mean, I, I kind of said in the yeah. column, they're not actually going to fire Rocco, so here's some things they can do. Yeah. And hopefully they – I think some of them they will. Some of them they kind of already know they have to do. They're just dragging their feet on it. And that's what pisses me off so much. Yeah. If you know you're going to cut Max Kepler yep. because he's washed up and cut there's him. a rookie ready to do it, then what are you waiting for? Right. You're just not gonna, do it. You're not going to save any money. Yeah. You have to pay him one way or the other. Do they think that somebody's going to – I mean, he makes too much money to trade him, right? I mean, eight and a half million isn't that much anymore. Yeah. If there's a team out there that looks just like, hey, all of our outfielders are right-handed. Yeah. We need a left-handed bat. And he's a good glove. He's a good glove. You know, I could see it, um, but but you know, right now he's blocking other players who are better than him, and they're struggling to score runs. You can, if yeah. you have someone ready to come in and help your struggling offense, and you're not calling him up because well we got this other guy. That's just stupid. It is dumb. That's not the way. It's a cutthroat world out there, Rocco. Yeah. yeah. And how many of the other things they're going to do? You know, I don't think they're probably going to fire the hitting coach. And I don't know if that, you know, really makes that much of a difference. But when you see how many young hitters are not progressing, Mm -hmm. you know, Jose Miranda was a rookie of the year candidate last year. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be a middle of the order guy this year. He lasted a month and they sent him to AAA. Isn't that the hitting coach's job to teach these young guys how to have better at bats, to help them work through slumps? You just give up on the kid and send him to the minors? But I didn't know this that the hitting coach, um, is like the personal hitting coach for Correa. Right. 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 But he's got well, all the more reason to can him then because yeah. Correa has been terrible. Yeah. And I can get it. Correa is like your golden boy. You don't want to piss him off. Yeah. But he's signed to a six year contract. Yeah. Where's he going? He's not going anywhere. You're not. And, but also, you're not going to bench Correa because he's the best shortstop in baseball and he's carrying his weight because mm-hmm. of his defense. Mm-hmm. But to me, that's a great way to kill two birds with one stone. Get rid of the hitting coach because he sucks. He's not mm-hmm. doing good work. But also light a fire under Correa. Like, yep. oh, you like this guy, huh? Well, he's gone. So figure it out. <laughs> what do you think you now? Know? Yeah. Correa. Figure it out. You're making $35 million a year. Yeah. You're yeah. relying on some Canaries reject to teach how to hit. That was I mean, weird. Come on. I did not know. That was a strange connection. I mean, he he pl- played like A ball, double A ball, and the Canaries were his last stop. He was oh, here for like two weeks it. and couldn't even cut it here. And that's when he retired. But he, he, that was his last playing experiences with the Sioux Falls Canaries. And now he's a Twins hitting coach. And it's not going well. That's wild. Um, so they're they're basically – are they still like game ahead? No. What's two and a half. Two, two and a half. Because the whole – League sucks. Detroit's in second place at three games under 500. Oh, God. And the thing is, the Twins could probably do nothing. And they'll probably still win the division. Yeah. Just because the rest of the division's so bad. But, but I said that last year, too. Yeah. And eventually Cleveland woke up. And won the division well, by ten games. When you're only up by a few games, you know anything can happen. That's not good. They should be ten games ahead. They by should. Now. They absolutely should. And they've their lack of clutch hitting has cost them games. Uh, but the bullpen has obviously cost them games. Sometimes it was the right guy didn't do the job. Other times it was Rocco. What are you doing? Um, but it's not. It's not like oh Rocco should go because he keeps making bad pitching changes. Or Rocco should go because Carlos Correa is hitting two hundred five. No, Rocco should go because he's one eighty and two hundred in the last three years. Yeah, he's not winning anymore. Right. Yeah, he got Manager of the Year in twenty nineteen. That was five years ago. You know, these, if it doesn't, it's about get, results. Yeah, and don't you feel like it's got to be getting to the breaking point? No, they just signed him to an extension apparently. What? And here's the kicker: um, they right. didn't announce that. No, like the twins apparently signed Baldelli to an extension, never made a public announcement, and some blogger or like the really MLB trade rumors or somebody got wind of it and reported it. That to me says a lot that the twins didn't even have the balls to publicly say, like, hey, we signed Rocco to an extension. Yeah. That tells me they know that he's not popular. And I'm not saying you should let the fans determine who your manager is. Right. But geez, Rocco replaced Paul Molitor who is a Hall of Famer, one Mm -hmm. of the probably 50 greatest players of all time. And Mm -hmm. also, by the way, a local boy, Mm -hmm. Minnesota product. You you get – Paul Molitor has a leash this long, apparently. But Rocco? (laughs) Rocco's the guy. Oh, we can't – poor Rocco Baldelli. We couldn't possibly – I mean, that just doesn't make sense. Oh, man. Uh, In other news, um, you have have a story that will be up soon about uh, USF and some stuff there, which is very interesting. Yeah, if you remember this past football season, uh, SDSU's football team, they have an organization called the JFPA, the mm-hmm. Jackrabbit F- Former Player Association, 
been around for a while. Yep. Uh, Ryan McKnight, a Sioux Falls guy uh, who was an All-American offensive lineman for the Jacks, kind of got it going with the idea of raising money for the program. And this was even before NIL came along. But just to try to give more resources to the program, it was also a way to kind of, you know, get alums together, create some mm-hmm. pride and fellowship and whatnot. And it really took off. Um, and then especially this most recent season, it blew up because uh, they're going to the national championship. You know, they're making a, a big trip down to Frisco. Um, John Stiglmeyer and his staff really embraced the, the JFPA. Um, and the, the big the big sort of story was they were the ones who bought them the new helmets. They had those white oh, helmets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which they wore all through the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. I know they wore them at the national championship. They're really cool helmets. And they had come to, to Steg and said, what's something you don't have that mm-hmm. you know, we can pick up the tab for you? And he was like, you know what? Everyone else has an alternate helmet. We don't. That'd be cool. There you go. That's pretty cool. And, and is that why they won the national championship? No. Are they going to win, get more recruits because they have another cool helmet? Probably not. But it definitely is just another thing that you kind of add to the total picture. So they win the national championship. This JFPA thing continues to blow up. USF had already kind of looked at that and said, you know, maybe we should do something like that. And then when they saw how much it blew up in this past year, they said, mm-hmm. all right, not only should we do that, we should see if those guys can can help us get off the ground. Oh, well, that's a good and, idea. And they did. Um, Alex Anderson is a USF uh, alum, played wide receiver back on their national championship teams under Kalen DeBoer. He's kind of running it. He reached out to Ryan McKnight, or at least that, that organization – Got a couple like, hey, just give us some pointers on how to get it off the ground. Mm-hmm. Long story short, they have one of those now too. And it's obviously a lot different because SDSU is a big public institution. USF's a tiny private Division II school. Um, but it's been a huge hit. Uh, you well know USF is kind of known for their football team. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what USF is about. And they've had so much success in the NAIA era, but they moved up to Division II and they're still very good. Mm-hmm. And just because of the success they've had um, – the, the pride in that program, the, the alumni base has always been very, very strong. I still run into USF football alums that I covered 10, 12, 15 years ago all the time. Mm-hmm. And every time I see him, we have a long conversation, talk about the old days. Um, a lot of the USF alums stay in Sioux Falls after they graduate. Uh, so they're everywhere. They you, are. You, you would get the sense that USF is a bigger school if you just based it on the football alumni, how, yeah. how prevalent they are. So it's kind of a no brainer to get that going. Um, and so, yeah, now that they're, they're starting to take off, um, they're going to be, I think today they're having is the SID shootout, the, the USF golf tournament in honor of SID Quartermeyer. They're out there for that. And then tomorrow is the celebration of life. They're calling it for Bob Young. It's essentially kind of a, a public, I don't want to use the word funeral, but you know, no, sort it's of a memorial, a, right? Yeah. Because he died in the middle of winter. They couldn't really do anything right. to honor him then. Uh, so a lot of USF alums are going to be coming back into town this weekend for the golf tournament today, the, the Bob Young thing tomorrow. So the it's called the CFLA, Coup Football Legacy Association. I'm glad they used Coup. Yeah. It's and kind of dying there for a while. It is. It is a little bit. And uh, another cool thing about it is the, the SDSU one, the JFPA, is players only. It's very much like you have to have played football here to be mm-hmm. a part of that. Not to be exclusionary. It's just mm-hmm. that's, that's how they've built mm-hmm. it. USF said, you know, we're a little bit smaller. Maybe we should be more inclusive. So they're kind of opening it up to fans, uh, you know, boosters, anyone who wants to support it. They've already started begging me for money. So (laughs) I told them I'm a sports writer. I don't have any. Um, But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's off to a good start. Alex and I go way back. So it was good to catch up with him. And it was funny. I looked at the names on the, you can go to their, their website. I think it's uh, cooplegacy.com, And uh, the names of everyone on the board of directors, like, linebacker defensive back, <laughs> all guys that i covered yeah, uh, back in the day and uh, so yeah that's a really cool thing and i'm hoping to make it out to the bob young thing tomorrow and probably see all those guys where is it at the stadium bob oh, young field cool yeah. that makes sense yeah uh that's that's a great story it'll be uh online soon if you get to this before i get to that uh <laughs> but uh, look for that very soon um uh it's you know right now we're sort of in a we're in that lull time but there's been news um, because of the small schools, yeah. you know, I mean, Obviously we talk, keeps winning. Yeah. we talk so much about USD and SDSU, some, you know, not that we ignore the, the Sioux Falls schools, but they, there's been a lot going on. And, uh, your story this week about Augie baseball, you know, I, I knew it, but I didn't really realize how good they've been for so long. Yeah. That's, that was impressive. It's been 10 years now. Yeah. And they were, a. Uh, 
I would I would say an average Division two program before Tim Huber got there. Mm-hmm. They had some good years under Jeff Holm. Um, but when Tim got there, it was kind of like, okay, build this thing, and he built it. Um, and, you know, what's even more amazing is I think is people don't understand. I think a lot of people think, oh, college, those kids are all on scholarship. They have seven scholarships for the entire roster. That was pretty shocking. And as recently as five years ago, they had four. They won a national championship dividing four scholarships among, what, 40 players, 35, oh. you know, however many it is. Um, and they're, I mean, they're putting guys in pro ball, you know, mm-hmm. guys that are getting drafted, going on to the independent leagues. And if you go to an Augie game, I think that's the biggest difference. You can, you can read in the paper that, oh, they're 40 and 15, mm-hmm. or they won the conference, or this guy has a 2.20 ERA. All oh, that sounds great. But it's the eyeball test. When you go to a game, mm-hmm. their pitchers throw 90, 91, 92 miles an hour. Their hitters consistently hit the ball over the fence. They hit, they average more than a home run per game and they're big dudes. Yeah. When I played amateur ball, I mean, I played amateur ball forever, but when I first started playing amateur ball, a lot of my amateur teammates were Augie baseball players. Yeah. They looked like me. Yeah. You know, they were 5'10, 190. <laughs> you know, you go walk into the Augie dugout now and yeah. it's like this. <laughs> you know, they're all 6'4, 6'5, yep. 210, 220, Agile. big dudes, athletes, you know, that can play multiple positions that were star football players, star basketball players. Uh, I, I just can't say enough about the job Tim Huber has done and it, full disclosure. He's a friend of mine. We played yeah. amateur ball together for a long time, but he's got the results. But geez, I mean, yeah, to win a national championship. I mean, when he came to Augie, I guarantee you that was not on the radar. Mm-hmm. They didn't say, come here and win us a national championship. Right. Win us conference championship. Yeah, and it's baseball. We're up in the North. You're yeah. not supposed to win national right. championships. Be good in the conference, get to the playoffs and you're doing an awesome job. Yeah. They do that every year now. And they have a chance now to win their second national championship in five years. They're, they were the first Northern school to win one ever. That's crazy. And now they have a chance to do it again. And you had in that story about who's in the – it's eight teams to make yep. it, right, to the D2 World Series. It's in North Carolina. Yep. Starts when? Saturday? Uh, I think it starts – Augie's first game is Sunday, but I think it Sunday. starts Saturday. So – but there's – I think Texas, Florida, yeah, South Carolina, New yeah. Hampshire, somebody's in there. But yeah. other than that, yeah. it's all Southern schools. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, you really and, – and this year especially, when they won it in 2018, it was that year or the next year, uh, SDSU had an opening because their coach went somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I know Tim was a candidate there. I was surprised they didn't hire him mm-hmm. because, I mean, he had just won a Division II National Championship right right down the street. Mm-hmm. Um you know, Rob Bishop's doing a really nice job over at SDSU, so I'm not at all trying to suggest that Tim should be angling for that job or that the Jacks should be looking at him. But what he's done this year now, this was a rebuilding year. Last year was the year they mm-hmm. were supposed to get back to the tournament and win another championship. They came up short. They graduate almost their entire lineup. And so, like, okay, we're starting over a little bit this year. Well, now they're back there again with a bunch of freshmen and, and some transfers and, and a couple upperclassmen. That's good coaching. Yeah. The, you know, you, you can say, well, good players. Are, I mean, it's yep. – the job he's done this year is by far the best job he's done. So I really have to wonder how much longer Augie can hold on to him. Now, Tim likes it here. His yep. family's from here. He's not exactly looking to bounce. Yeah. But if some school, whether it's a mid-major or Summit League school, or, geez, somewhere in the MAC or, or, I don't know, Big Ten, anywhere, like the record speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. You know, And Tim, as recently as two years ago, was still one of the best amateur baseball players in South Dakota. <laughs> um, not that that necessarily makes him a good no. manager, but I think it helps. You yeah. know that he's he's still in it with his players. He knows what what they're going through. He knows how to relate to them. He's a really great hitting and base running teacher because he's been doing it his whole life. Yeah. As recently as three years ago, he was still the starting center fielder for the Renner Monarchs. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it helps to be able to work with your kids on having good at bats, taking good angles in the outfield, how to steal a base. Uh, he's not just a guy who has an eye for talent and can recruit good players. He's a good teacher, too. I love playing with him. I would ask him questions all the time. I was a 35-year-old fat guy. It's not like I was <laughs> trying to go somewhere with my baseball career. But you career, just want to get better. Just, yeah, yeah, it was just great to pick his brain. Like, what do you do here? How do you do this? And always had a good answer for it and could you know explain it in a, in a, in a good way. So um, Augie should consider themselves really, really lucky if if he hangs around. Yeah, and so they play uh, this weekend. Um, there's eight teams in it. Is it? Like double how's it double work? elimination? Yeah, they played the defending national champion on Sunday because they're the seven seed. So again, they were the five seed when they won it in 2018. Yeah. So being a lower seed isn't necessarily a death knell, but they are the seven seed out yep. of the eight teams. And it's t- and it's different a little bit with D two because there's not a lot of cross playing. Right. 
Um, so the seeds are important, but maybe not who, as intimidating. Who, who's, as who's, who's on the mound for you is probably yep. the most important thing. Yep. And they've got good pitching right now. Seth Miller's 11 and one. And, you know, uh, he's one of the few seniors on that team. He's clearly kind of all the cliches, you know, putting the team on his back, whatever, like kind of, he saw it in the, the super regional when they had an elimination game, he threw 140 pitches to mm-hmm. get through a complete game. And it, it was apparent. He's like, I'm not coming out of this game. You know, we're, I'm getting this, I'm getting us to the next game. And he did that. When you have a guy like that, kind of that workhorse, it's almost like the Jack Morris in 1991. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We're going uh, to take you, know, you home. And it's probably good to face, I mean, in this sense, like if you're going to face one of the best teams in that defending national champion. You're fresh. So you can yep. put your best pitcher on the mound. And they haven't seen you before. They're going just on whatever film they yep. have. And know. they're thinking, well, do we put our best pitcher on the hill? I or... think they will, but I don't know anything about them. I don't right. know how many pitchers they have yeah. or whatever. Well, that'll be crazy. We'll have to watch for that. Uh, were you at the first game against Mankato in the Super Regional when they – Had the controversial yeah. ending? Yeah. I wasn't there at the end. I was there for a while. There were so many people there. I, I brought Jen and Arthur. We yep. left early because we couldn't really see. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, plus it was five to nothing. It looked like they were just going to get beat. Yep. They score four runs in the ninth inning to go from five to nothing to five four, load the bases. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's seen it by now. The kid kind of leaned out yep. to try to get hit by pitch. I, it sounds to me like Augie is still a little salty about it. Yep. But outside, they're, they're biased, obviously, it yep. was them. But the consensus everywhere else is that it was the right call. Looked like the right call it, to me. You can see him kind of turn into it. Yeah. But the 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 sad thing about that was, and they won, so it's not that sad. But it was probably a pit. The pitch was probably a ball he's going to walk in with. Right. Because it was a full count. Yeah. The one thing if it was o two. Right. You know, that's kind of like, hey, it looks like I'm going to strike out. Let yeah. me try this. Yeah. But yeah. And three two, it could have just been a ball and same result. Ah, but anyway. maybe it worked out in the long run because yeah. as angry as Tim Huber was in the moment. Yeah. You know, maybe he saw the replay later. It's like, oh shit, yeah, they were right because they yep. did review it. Yeah, and if you review it and still call it, yeah, yeah. And in the when you see the film, it's it's uh-huh. different than when it is live. I mean, yeah. it's just it is. But I I think and talking to the players after they because they came out the next day and killed them. Yeah, eight to three and sixteen to two. Yeah, and uh, they all said like, yeah, that kind of pissed us off. Yeah, a little bit of a fire under us. Well, good luck to the uh, Augustana Vikings in the uh, D two World Series, and. Uh, what else is going on? Anything? What's coming up that we should be watching for? I don't know, man. What is it coming Just up? Twins. <laughs> Not much. Uh, I will say that uh, Saturday morning, 8 a.m., the uh, Sioux Falls Live, this is our sponsor team, Sioux Falls Live Blue Jays uh, will be playing their first game in a tournament, U12 girls softball. First, this is our first tournament ever. Where at? Uh, Sherman. Okay. So we got three games on Saturday. Ooh, that's a long day. Uh, it's a long day. But the first one's at 8. They're 8, and then not again until 3.30. So we're going to leave and come back. Yeah. That'll uh, be good. But, uh, yeah, so that is happening. That's going to be pretty monumental. So let's all keep our fingers crossed on that one. Uh, good luck to the coach on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck, coach. Um, so thank you to Shenanigans for letting us be here as always. And uh, thank you, folks. Uh, for tuning in. We will see you soon. Next time. Next time. Bye.